Hey there, I am Parth Doshi, exploring the field of RPA and sharing my learnings with you by making videos. In this video, we are going to learn a very important topic in UI path. We are going to see the importance of a config file or you can say configuration file in UI path projects. Why is it required? When to use it? How to use it? And different things on config. So we are going to see each and everything about config files in detail. So first let's start with understanding what is a config file and why is it required in UiPath projects. So whenever we work on a project using REF framework in UiPath, we automatically see in the first step initialize the workflow which is there, we see a config file that is generated. Now it's not compulsory that a config file can only be used in REF framework projects. You can even use while working with normal projects that you build in studio using a simple process. So config files look something like this. You can have your own config file. So what we do is we use config file when we are dealing with multiple files. So what happens is when we build a complete project in UI path, maybe your company is working on some project, there are different phases. The first is you make some POC or something. And then later it might happen that you do UAT testing and then some other changes. And then after many usage checks, it goes to the production. Now the file names that were used during the UAT or during other times of developing that project might not be the same when it goes into production. So suppose if you are dealing with 10 Excel files in your UiPath workflow. So I don't have an example, but I'm just trying to build the scenario over here. So suppose I have 10 read range activities when I'm doing the POC. Now the file names got changed when I moved to UAT. I have the same Excel file with the same data, but now the names are different. So what I will have to do is I will again have to give the path. Now later when it goes into production, again, there might be different file names. So again, I have to change for the 10. So now what config file help us do is it helps us to put all that parts in one particular file. So you see key. Now here the, comes the concept of dictionary using dictionary in UiPath. So what we do is key is going to be the name of the file that we want to store. So suppose I'm storing a file for some employee data, then manager data and et cetera, et cetera. So in that way, I give the key name to it. That is employee data and in the value, I will specify the path. So what will happen is whenever the path changes, you just need to make change in the configuration file and it will automatically be reflected in your UI path workflow. We'll see that complete procedure how to do that. So don't worry about it. Just try to understand the theoretical scenario over here. Now, if I have suppose 10 files, employee, manager, heads, subheads, uh, backend developers, frontend developers, et cetera, et cetera. I have suppose your 10 key values and I have 10 paths over here. What we will do is we will read the path every time from our config file. So in that case, what happens is now, whenever I have that path changed over here, it will automatically reflect the change in my UI path. So let's start by doing that. So what we will do is, okay, so let me go to activities. Now, what I will do is I will create one more Excel file name new worksheet and let me name it as and okay so i will just quickly put some data into it so i just want to show you how we can do the complete config initialization in our normal workflows Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to use a read range activity. Okay, sorry. It's going to be the name. It's going to be employee ID. And it's going to be, okay, I think this is fine. Rajesh. Suresh, Ramesh, 
Sita and Geeta. And let me just quickly put random employees IDs 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now let's say this is my file name during production. Right now we are not using the config file. We are simply going to use the read range activity over here. Okay. So now we are going to select that particular file over here. And now suppose this is, let's take it example, again, this example in terms of building a complete project, which is going to go into production. So when I'm preparing the POC, this is going to be my file name. So let's say this is my file name. What we are going to do is, we are going to save the output in a data table. Let me create employee Okay. Sorry for this because my system is lagging a bit. Let's use the output data table activity to see the output in a message box. Output and let me use a box. I mean a message box. output okay so let me save this and first run the file now my you see the file name i have given the right file name okay so it won't create any problems for me but later when i change the file name what will happen we will see that So it's taking a bit time to run. Let's wait for it to get executed. So now as we can see, we have the output completely visible over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my project folder and let me click on this and I'm going to rename the file. So now I'm going to keep it as M and I'm not going to update my UI path. So let me save and run the file. It will now immediately throw me an error. Now let's wait for it. You see, the workbook does not exist. So now what happened is I changed my file name. Okay, but I forgot to change the path over here or to give the updated file name. So in that case, it throwed me an error. Now we are going to see, now this might be the use case like I am reading over here. Maybe I'm doing some operation and I want to write in again in the same file in different shape. So I will have to change everywhere that thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a config file for this. So let me name this as employee file, employee data, okay? And value is going to be that complete file path. And make sure in config file, you give the complete path and not just the file name because it needs to find it completely. So let me save this and close my config file. Now what I'm going to do is 
Now, whenever you want to use a config file, what you need to do is you need to definitely read that file initially. And this is going to be the same. Okay. So now, how do you convert your Excel file data into a dictionary and use it? What we are going to do is we are going to create a dictionary over here. Let's name this as config. Click on variable type, browse for more types. Here, select dictionary. So just type dictionary and then we can go over here. Now this needs to be string because this is going to be my key value, which is in string and this needs to be object because it is a path. So I have just simply created a dictionary over here. Now what you need to do is you need to use an assigned statement. Okay. Here you need to pass your that variable the config variable and first we need to initialize our dictionary. So for that, what we are going to do is we are going to type new. Okay. Sorry for the spelling mistake. New dictionary. You need to specify off string and space is going to be my object. And one thing I missed is a comma over here. So now when I click on OK, now my errors are gone. So till now what we have done is we have basically created a config file where we gave the key and value. We have initialized our dictionary. Now you need to do is use a for each. Okay. And not a for each row, but a for each activity and the type argument okay so sorry for this we need to use a for each activity because we are going to loop our excel files so you need to use a for each row activity over here and now the data table is going to be this config dt that we are going to create right now config dt okay so now for each row in config dt, you need to again use assign statement. And now what we are going to do over here is we are going to initialize all our values. So this is the only step you need to do. Even if you have 10 paths or 10 file names or 10 anything defined over there, you just need to do this one step and it will initialize to all your key and value because here we are using a dictionary and not a variables. So now what you need to do is you need to go to config in bracket. You need to specify row. Okay. Because this is a row. Let me click on this. Row bracket here is going to be key. After that to string dot trim now why trim because it might happen that we might make some mistakes while writing that key and we might have some spaces over there so we are just going to eliminate this row and to each key we are going to initialize the value which is going to be v a l u v e now let me go to this and let me just check key and value yes now what i want to do is I want to read the file which has the key employee file, whatever the name is. Employee data. So what I will do here is I will just simply use my dictionary config in bracket here you need to specify only your key so it is going to be employee file i think employee data sorry yeah. 
dot to string. Now, no matter my file name changes or whatever happens, my workflow will execute and it will show me the output. So let me just simply run it. You see, without errors, it worked perfectly fine. So now what if I again change my file name? Let me rename this to yellow YE. So now what I need to simply do is I need to go to my config file and give this new path. That's it. Nothing else. So where is a new path? Okay, it's not showing me the new file name. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So what I will do is I will just simply open the file. And I know what name I have changed. So I have just need to change the path over here. It's going to be this. So you see, I haven't even opened my UI path workflow. I just made the changes over here. And now, now I'm going to execute again. And it should give me the output without any errors. So you see the file name changed, but I did not make even a single change in my UI path workflow and I got the output. So this is how we can use a config file and build a very robust project without having any major changes made in the workflow, even though the file name changes. This is majorly used when you build projects in a company which are going to go into production, the file name might change and many different problems might come. So I hope you gained some knowledge while watching this video and learned very interesting topic. Thank you for watching the complete video and please do subscribe to my channel Partoshi Learning by Doing.